Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Monday, June 10th, 2013. In the weeks leading up to the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference, rumors, leaks and speculation have been abundant, as is traditional with all Apple events. Join us now to help examine which of the leads are solid and which are suspect is SiliconANGLE contributing editor, John Casaretto. Good morning, John. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference kicks off today at the Moscone Center in San Francisco and will mark the first event from the tech giant since the unveiling of the iPad Mini seven months ago. So, John, the De Worldwide Developers Conference, by its nature, usually focuses on software. So what are we expecting to hear about iOS? Well, that's truly one of the biggest developments that are probably, it's probably going to come out of there is uh, iOS. Uh, we finally get um, a peek at iOS 7, it appears, um, and what Johnny Ive, the, the lead designer of many of Apple's products, has been working on. Um, we've heard a lot recently about the skeuomorphic design element um, and, and how we're gravitating away from that with these future releases of iOS. And it's believed that uh, the new iOS 7 will include many of these uh, flat white, gray, silver, black textures. Uh, it's going to introduce a whole bunch of new features um, in, in terms of uh, appearing more unified, uh, integrating weather in, in new ways. It's been redesigned, um, airdrop functionality. I mean, there's a lot of things out there in that bubble. Um, integration uh, with your car, with Siri and Maps, uh, redesigned camera apps, uh, different APIs and what's going to be available there. So a lot of things to watch uh, in terms of the iOS and its development. And uh, iOS 7 will be announced, and we'll know more very, very shortly. OS X is the second of Apple's two major platforms. What sort of plans does Tim Cook have in store there? Well, yeah, th basically, this um, we're expecting a, a new release of the uh, OS X operating system. It's 10th uh, release since its inception back in 2001. Uh, the code name internally was Cabernet. And there's a bunch of new features that are coming out, some, some new tagged and uh, uh, browsing modes and things like that. The ability to have full screen workspaces on, on multiple desktops, a bunch of expected features. Um, you know, note, though, however, that, that these products were in development prior to Apple's leadership changes um, in software engineering. So some of the um, things that, that, that were have been expected um, as far as some of the evolution here have been postponed. Um, so this will be kind of a, you know, a, a mild evolution and not so much, you know, following the iOS track just yet. We've seen several PC manufacturers already uh, begin unveiling new laptops that boast Intel's next-gen Haswell chips. Is Apple expected to include any hardware unveilings with those Haswell chipsets? I would, I would expect so. I mean, it, it's likely that uh, a number of these systems, in fact, the new uh, MacBook Airs will sport the new processors. And, and the reason why is uh, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, the Haswell chipsets are more battery efficient. They're f faster processors. You know, this kind of cutting edge performance is perfect for the kind of machine that the MacBooks are. The MacBook Air is um, great display, leading features. Battery life is at a premium. And at the same time, when you can do that without actually, you know, compromising, in fact, excelling in terms of performance, well, I think it's a natural fit. So, you know, I think that we'll see some some notions here that, that these will be Haswell-based, and uh, I think that will, will definitely emerge. We've previously reported on Apple's iRadio streaming music service project. Is the announcement of iRadio pretty much all but certain at this point? Yeah, it, it would seem that way. You know, Apple's radio service, uh, it, for those that don't know, is uh, a service that they're looking at launching. It's akin to Pandora. Um, it, 
Apple has a specific advantage, a number of advantages actually, but uh, one of those is that it could potentially use um, user data that it's collected from songs purchased previously from, from people using the iTunes store to develop and build their libraries and, and deliver content and so on. Um, and, you know, it also, you know, of course, the natural base of the, the Apple uh, systems as far as the phones go, uh, the amount of users that are out there, you know, they had planned uh, last year to, to release this in iOS 6, but they had postponed the launch um, because there were some, some deals that were not finalized. Well, those deals, those, there's talk that those deals have been in place, they have been finalized, and now it just seems imminent that, you know, everything's lined up as far as iRadio being officially announced. Are there any other notable services announcements that are expected? Uh, well, yeah, definitely. There's a number of things that are coming out. Um, you know, there's um, the familiarity. I mean, all these things are, are tied in with iTunes. Um, you know, and, and that's a big advantage for Apple when it comes to streaming music. I think what you're alluding to is a lot of people are looking to see if, you know, is uh, Apple TV going to evolve and come out of this? You know, that remains to be seen. I don't think it's, it's pretty early for that one. Um, but, you know, in all of these cases, these things are integrated into the, um, the iTunes, the Apple experience. And I think that they have that positioning and buzz on their side. Um, the service is supposed to be, as far as the iRadio, free of charge and ad supported. So another point of revenue for Apple. You know, John, it seems like we've been talking about Apple TV forever, and it still isn't expected to come as an announcement during this conference. Is Apple TV ever going to come? Well, the word is is that it certainly um, is certainly is coming, uh, but not at this event. I mean, probably not even this year. Uh, there's there's too many things that still have to be determined, and the fact is is that there's a lot of people racing to that market. We're seeing a lot of devices hit the market from competitors. Uh, you know, the Xbox has got its TV features. Uh, PS3 has features like that. I mean, you know, on and on and on. Everybody's kind of running to that. You know, the one thing that we do know is that Apple is a um, is the kind of company that that waits to, to kind of uh, take a product and and make it better than everybody else and deliver do the delivery part of it better and monetize it better than everybody else. So they're not really in a rush to do this. Now, another highly anticipated and headline making Apple product that we've discussed is the iWatch. Is that still a ways off, or do you think Apple? is waiting to launch iWatch so that they compete with the Google Glass public release? Well, you know, the reports are indeed that it, it is still a ways out, and the iWatch probably won't be coming out at all this year. Um, you know, again, this is another instance where, where Apple is, uh, you know, not really being innovative, because certainly there's other watches out there. We've seen a lot of, you know, number of other products. Um, and they're certainly never been accused of being the first to market with anything. Um, you know, what they're known for is, is doing something and doing something right. So, you know, their competitors go out and do it. So there's a bunch of pieces to this. Technical development, for sure. User experience is something that needs to be there. And they need to make sure that there's a way to monetize it. And I think that that's really the, the whole thing is, you know, they need to build that buzz. That It really wouldn't be a surprise that would really say, bam, we have an iWatch. You know, from the outside, it, it's really hard to tell where they are as far as the development is. But, uh, you know, I, I think at this point, it's pretty far out and, and we probably won't see it this year. We know for certain Apple has some projects in the works that perhaps just aren't ready for reveal at this time. Uh, what do you think that we can look forward to as far as fall announcements go? Well, I think that as far as, you know, that's a bit shorter term, and I think that some of the things that we will see are, are a new iPhone. Certainly, you know, a lot of competitors bringing some very able products out there and, and uh, starting to chip away at some of the, the prominence of the, uh, the iPhone platform. So we'll probably see something new roll out in terms of that, and definitely um, if iOS 7 is indeed announced, that it will integrate that um, to, the, to its fullest extent. Um, perhaps ITV will come along, some sort of announcement around that. Um, maybe a new version of the iPad. You know, one thing we do know about Apple is that they are very evolutionary, and, and that's something that we can look forward to is that, you know, they'll take and they'll, they'll evolve their products. And, uh, you know, when, when a new product comes along, you know, from time to time, like, you know, the ITV, the iWatch, those would be two new products. It's been a long time, um, and they come, it's few and far between. So I think that those are definitely something that we could probably look forward to in the fall. 
Well, John, thanks so much for those updates this morning. Great to see you. Thank you. And later this morning, all of today's top tech headlines in your SiliconANGLE daily roundup. But up next, SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto is back to provide updated information surrounding the recent NSA leaks and the whistleblower culprit.